Huh? It's the pressure chamber of science! <laughs> you can use it to see what pressure does to different things. It's wild. Go ahead and drag something into the pressure chamber, close the door, then hit the buttons to increase or decrease the pressure inside. Have a blast! <laughs> oh, I don't mean to put any pressure on you here, but pressure's pretty powerful stuff, so be careful. Cool. Pressure is cool. <laughs> but let's face it, we're all under pressure every day. Air pressure, that is. You can't see it, but air has pressure. And air pressure pushes in all directions all the time. There's five million billion kilograms. I said five million billion kilograms of air. About 900 kilograms of air are pressing down on you, me, and all of us right now. It's about the weight of a car pushing down on our heads. We don't feel it because it's pushing in all directions at once. Besides, we were born here. We're used to it. Impressive, huh? Well, I see you've met Schrodinger, the lab cat of science. What's the deal? Don't you like cats? Or are you just trying to put the ow in meow? <laughs> Huh? Ah, finally some peace and quiet. Things were getting noisy around here. Anyway, as you can see, the radio is still on, but we can't hear it. Did you hear me? It's on, but we can't hear it. <laughs> Isn't that cool? It's because you made the pressure so low, you removed almost all the air in the chamber. You made a vacuum. A vacuum is a place where there's no air, no water, no nothing. And that means no pressure. Since sound waves move through molecules, like the ones in air, water, or something solid, when there's no air in the chamber, there's no sound. Wow! Is that a cup for munchkins? <laughs> oh, oh, you did that with the pressure chamber. Cool. The styrofoam cup is made of plastic filled with tiny air bubbles. When you increase the pressure, it smushed those air bubbles and shrank the cup. Pressure pushes in all directions at once, so it shrank the cup without changing its shape very much. Do you know any thirsty munchkins? You raised the pressure and the balloon got smaller. The air in the balloon got smushed together until the air pressure inside the balloon was the same as the air pressure in the chamber. Uh, they're perfect for really small parties. Whoa, it's a poppin' pressure party! You lowered the pressure, and the balloon got bigger until it popped! The balloon has less pressure inside, and the air can expand. It presses on the balloon from the inside and stretches it out until 
until it popped. <laughs> cool. So next time you're having a party with balloons, think pressure. anyone? <laughs> when you lowered the pressure, the water, which was at room temperature, started to boil. But the water didn't get that hot. <laughs> Wild! Air in the room presses down on the water. That pressure keeps most of the water molecules from evaporating, uh, turning into vapor. But here, the pressure above the water molecules is low, so water molecules can escape from the liquid easily. The water boils without getting hot. <laughs> ah, this is almost Iced tea. Hmm. Huh? That's a high pressure situation. When you raise the pressure in the pressure chamber, the altimeter acts like it's underwater. On the surface of the Earth, the atmosphere presses down on us with a lot of pressure. But if you move closer to the center of the Earth, there's even more stuff, more air or water or land above you, pushing down. So as you get closer to the center of the Earth, the pressure gets higher and higher. Just think of it this way. Deeper and deeper means higher and higher. Pressure. You know, red usually means stop, like a red light. Well, red meant the pressure in the chamber got really, really high, high enough to blow the machine up, which you did. But it's a good thing you're wearing your safety glasses. I mean, it's not like we're under any pressure here. I mean, the pressure here is virtual. I mean, it's a good thing there's nothing serious going on. Just a meteoroid hurtling toward our planet, about to destroy our world as we know it. I mean, other than that, you know, there's, there's no pressure. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Oh, hey, what's shaking? I was just borrowing some hardware from the old Morph Master here. Might help me hack into Max. Ah, yep, this baby ought to do it. Go ahead and shift the geologic gear and make this puppy rumble. Huh? Yep, the Morph Master 5000 can model the Earth's geologic processes. That is, show the changes the planet goes through as it grows. Of course, this baby does it much faster than the Earth. Check out the controls. There's a monitor with photos of real-world geological sites, a keypad, a gear shift, and of course, the button that gets me going, <laughs> the go button. <clears throat> you can select a real site and see what forces shaped it. Just choose a photo, enter the correct code numbers, then press the go button. Or you can just shift the gears and watch the Morph Master morph. Cool. The Earth's crust is cool, which is good. Because if it were hot, like the inside of the Earth, we'd all be walking around like this. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. <clears throat> anyway, the Earth's crust is broken up into huge slabs we call plates. And the plates move because of convection beneath the Earth's surface. That's when hot blobs of rock get pushed up, and they push the tectonic plates around. Check it out! Sometimes two of the Earth's plates slide along each other. But you can't blame me, because it's not my fault. No, it's an Earth's fault. <laughs> we get it, Bill. It's wild. 
pieces of the planet are actually moving against each other, causing waves of energy to move right through the ground. In some places, one of the Earth's plates will push down underneath another plate. The plate that goes under gets heated up, then it becomes hot, even melted rock, which can push to the surface to make volcanoes, geysers, or my favorite, hot springs. Cool.